and everything he's trying to tell you this morning is a lie and don't let the truth be in it wake up in your mind get up in your thinking and move in your purpose oh yes we're excited to be uh joint rejoining you yes we've been on a road trip we've been on a sabbatical you call it what you want to call it but we have been taking some time uh, just uh, uh, spending time with the Lord and, and and redirecting. You know, we're we're always in a season when it comes to moving with God because God is in in a time warp for most of us because God is moving now and most of us are lingering and, and, and letting the outside influences cause us not to get up in our minds. What is get up in our mind? Maybe, maybe your first time ever joining us for this broadcast. Get up in your mind means is that the first thing I do is I want to get up in my mind so I abide in God. Our base scripture for that is John chapter 15. And if you read through that, it says if you abide in him, he will abide in you. And anything from that point that you ask, because it's no longer your will, you will receive. See, it's a good way to start your morning every day because the way you start is the way you finish. But I get up in my mind so I can, I wake up in my mind so I can get up in my thinking. Now I get up in my thinking and I say Philippians 2 and 5 where the Bible says, let this mind be in me. Make it personal here. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now I have to make a conscious decision that everything that I've studied and all of the prayers and all of the, the consistency with God, I continually wake up in my mind because I wanted to stay with him where I abide in him. Abiding, meaning that I submit. Abiding, meaning that I get out the way. Abiding, remember that I remember uh, Luke 9, 23. It says, if you desire to follow me when you wake up, if you desire to follow me when you get up, if you desire to follow me when you are moving in your purpose, you must first abide in him. And that's being able to give him your best. How many of us give it, are giving our best? Are we just giving what we want other people to see? Or what we uh, uh, think is enough because of past uh, experiences. Well, my mother only prayed uh, uh, for dinner. Uh, uh, my, my parents only prayed when I went to church. And, and, and those, 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 uh, think those, those, those hereditary things that happen to us. Those curses that just happen just because. Because that's all I know. And most of us fail for a what? Lack of knowledge. It is how you present yourself. As what? A holy sacrifice that is pleasing and acceptable unto God. But then a little bit farther it says, be not conformed in Romans 12. Be not conformed to this world, but by the tr but, but by the renewing of your mind. So I must get up in my thinking. I have to let the mind of Christ in me. Someone says, how do I let it in? Read his word. Study his word. Pray his word. I cannot. We're, we're really uh, in a series uh, for the rest of this season of 2017 about prayer. And prayer is just not getting on your knees in the morning or in the evening or at night. Prayer is a lifestyle. Prayer is a mindset that I'm always, as the Bible says, pray without ceasing. It says, and all, don't worry, let go of everything, all the cares of this world, but pray unceasing. Meaning I must keep my mind fixed on God, but it must be my best. And family, it must be your best. Uh, it, it, you know, it was a time in my life where I was giving only what I thought was enough for, for you to say I'm a Christian. Oh, we've been a little too transparent this morning. Uh, I, I sung the right songs because I could get the right amens or I preached the right sermons that the right people would say, come preach at my church. Well, well, when you're transparent through the word of God, you better find a corner to preach on because there's not a lot of churches that are going to invite you to come out because now you are encouraging somebody to do better in God. I'm not knocking anything like that. I'm, I'm content preaching on the Facebook Live. I'm content on YouTube. I'm content on the corners. I'm content in the park. I'm content on the block, in my car, or anywhere else. I'm content because I now know that I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me in my mind. I'm ready. I'm ready to go through because there are a lot of obstacles to go through because when I wake up in my mind, I get up in my thinking. Don't you know that as a man thinketh in his heart, Proverbs 23 and 7, so is he. So if I think I'm crazy, if I think I'm this, I think I'm that, that's all I'll ever be. But when I change my mind, hallelujah, I know I present myself with the best. 
And no longer am I going to just settle for the less. Just to get by, just to just to, to be acceptable to people. I, I I want you to be in agreement with me because he is he's looking for one church that is without spot or blemish, that is in total agreement. That saying that same word rever, re, 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 revelates to me as it well does to you. We can high five each other in the Word of God because when we read the Scripture right now, we're going to say it's time for me to change my positioning and my position. To my position, my positioning is what I stand on, but my position is where I'm going. How, what, what, what is my goal? What are my purposes? Do I have my mind set on things above, or am I still thinking about the things on this earth, about a car, about a house, about money, is about something physical? And yes, physical will come when you become a master of your emotions. Uh, physical will will manifest itself. The hope will come to a thing by you manifesting your good steward principles and you're managing, uh, you're being able to manage your lifestyle and become just what God has called you to be, holy and acceptable. Someone who can do all things when you put your mind to it. Someone that, that greater is he that is in you than the evil that's in this world. So I don't have to worry about the things that are on the outside. But I must be sustained by the word of God in my mind. It's time to get our minds right. It's time to get our minds fixed. It's time to get settled with the with the with the mediocre mediocrity uh, the mediocre. I can't even get it out today. But but the the, the simple things. That make us say, oh, it's so easy. And it, 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 it's taking, it's costing me nothing. It's going to cost you something. Turn your Bibles with me this morning to Ecclesiastes. Chapter 5. I do encourage you to read the whole book uh, of Ecclesiastics. Uh, there's only uh, uh, six chapters. I mean, wait, wait, no, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. That's another book. Hold on, hold on. Let's get it correct. We don't want to mislead anybody. There are only nine chapters, uh, 11 chapters, 12 chapters in Ecclesiastics. And we, we encourage you to read those 12, but go to chapter 5. Chapter 3 is very important, too, to know the timing. There's a time for this, time for that, time for that. But everything, there's a time in God. Watch what he says in chapter 5, verse 1. First word, walk. See, I didn't say... We were talking about positioning because our positioning is that we stand on the principles of God. But my position is now it's time for me to move. Oh, somebody need to get up this morning and say it's time for me to move. Oh, no, you don't have to you don't have to move in your physical. Because see, everything I'm learning that I do in my mind, I can now make if I'm going to make a mistake. The mistake is made up here before you ever see it on the outside that I can repent before I ever make a fool of myself. Aren't you tired? And I'm being real, real this morning. Aren't you tired of making a fool of yourself? I know I am. And it's not up to you to change me and, and my foolishness. It's up to me. See, if I must do better in my in my in my thinking, I must do better in my principle living. I must do better in my walk. What he says right here, he says, walk prudently when you go to the house of God. See, a lot of us are just, just going, we broken, we're tore up, we, we, we don't know what's coming to tomorrow, we don't know what's the end for, the, we, we, we have no idea where we, we are really walking lost because we have no direction or no purpose. Watch this. But he says, walk prudently when you go to the house of God. Now, before you go to the church, we are still saying the house of God is where? In you. Don't rub your belly, but where is the church of God in you? It's in your mind. Because if you don't develop the church of God in your mind, we will lack. We will, we will, we will perish, excuse me, for a what? Lack of knowledge. It didn't say for a lack of nourishment. It didn't say for a lack of, uh, of, of clothing or housing. It says for a lack of knowledge, we perish. And we have to know in knowledge, acknowledging God through his word that the house of God is in me. And if I'm not building a, a, a sovereign, if I'm not building a holy temple in me, do, is God really dwelling in me? Can I really go to the house of God in me? Can you really go to the house of God in you would be the question. Because I'm asking the question for me, you're asking the question for yourself. But watch this. He says, walk prudently when you go into the house of God and draw near to here rather than to give the sacrifices of fools. Now, I told you, I'm tired of being a fool. 
And when you're a fool is when you are sacrificing about, I need this, I need that. It's about me, me, me. I, I, I. See, I must die so he must live. And it starts on how I am going to treat the house of God. Oh, you! I know you're looking in the mirror this morning and you say, this word is for me. Oh, no, it's for me. But it, I hope it is bouncing and you now get in here and study for yourself and understand that the word is for you also. Study yourself to be approved. Watch this. Draw near, near to hear, listen, rather than to give the sacrifice of fools. For they do not know that they do evil. Do not be rash with your mouth. See, a lot of us keep running our mouths. We always want to say, God this, God that. Instead of listening and hearing the word of God to what he has for me right now. Oh, no, stop looking for tomorrow. And, and yesterday is done. And when you make up in your mind that tomorrow is over. I, 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 if I made a mistake, I repent it. Let me start new because I wake up in my mind with a new thought. I get up in my thinking with a new purpose and I move expeditiously now when God says move because I didn't change my mind. Watch this. Do not be rash with your mouth and let your heart utter anything hastily before God. Now watch this. This is important. And I'd like to take my time with the word of God. It's not no reason to just go through it. We can study this whole chapter for this whole week. And we're going to do that. Now on Friday we'll finish up. But watch this. He says, and let not your heart. Where's your heart? Uh -uh. No, this is physical. We're thinking spiritual. Your heart is in your mind. Let this mind, not this heart. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The same physical heart. That was in the body of Jesus Christ is the same kind of physical heart you have, and it will die. It will go back from what it came. It's a it's a process called entropy. Look it up. Entropy is when you leave the, the original, the, the, the source of your creation. You are now in a state of entropy. That means you were once zero, now you're tomorrow you'll be in every second, every minute, every hour, every day, every week, every month, every year, you're getting a little bit older into entropy because you'll go back from which you came. But your spirit, oh, hallelujah, that is alive in your mind can live and live forever when you believe. He says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that those that believe that whosoever believe will not perish but have everlasting life. And we know if you go to Revelations, there's a there's a new Jerusalem. There's a new, there's a new, that's the only time you'll see something new. <laughs> Everything else is already done. And even in heaven, that's new. That new has already been done. Can't add to it or take it away. But am I letting my mind be so consecrated to understand it's my heart? Because we be uttering stuff in our heart before we let it come out our mouth. Lord, why are you doing me this way, God? Why are you doing me this way, God? Why you, why this happen, God? Why you let that happen? No, God didn't let it happen. Everything God did, it said was good. It, it, period. He is, not, he, is, he is not here to destroy. He is here to give life and give life more abundantly. Oh, yes, this world is destroying. Yes, this world is in a state of entropy. Because, yes, it was once 1 B.C., now it's 2017. And as you know about global warning and all the other things that's happening to this earth, we are in a state of decay. Well, guess what? So are you in your physical. But glory be to God, in my spiritual, I can live, but I must be careful on the utterance of my mind. Watch this. Do not be harsh with your mouth and let not your heart utter anything hasty before God. For God is in heaven and you are on earth. Therefore, let your words be few. Oh, sometimes we just got to listen to the Lord and not even go against the obstacles. Don't you know there's a there there is a distraction around us at all times waiting to take us off the mind of God by foolishness of other people? And yes, yeah, so easy to go left field when someone else is disrespecting you and you feel like, well, wow, no, that's physical. See, if I fight the battle in the spirit, God will take care of the rest. And before you know, everything that's coming against you will now be under you. Oh, hallelujah. Not by your power and might, but by the spirit of God that he has moved on your behalf. And I'm praying right now in the mighty name of Jesus that he's moving on my behalf. 
Watch this. For God is in heaven and you are on earth. Oh, don't get it twisted. You have not made it yet. And we must always acknowledge our positioning. I'm on earth. But I can look. Kingdom come. Will be done on earth as it what is in heaven. I don't have to wait. I can get in positioning to now get in position to move by the spirit of God. Therefore, let your words be few. For a dream comes through much activity and a fool's voice is known by his many words. When you make a vow to God, do not delay to pay it. Oh, we got to stop right there. Underline that. God, I promise if you do this, I'll do that. And we're still delaying, but God already moved. Oh, you don't see it yet because God's waiting for you to move before he moves. Oh, I'm going to help somebody today. Because see, in the time of God, we say, well, God, if you do this for me, I will steady this and I'll do that. But then we never see it. You know why? Because we're waiting on God to move first. Mm. Everything God has done for you is finished. What you have asked of him, he's already done it. He's just waiting on you to take the first step. Don't you know he said, if you take one, he'll take a million? Don't you know if you take a million, he'll take five million? He is waiting to bless you exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can think or ask. But you got to move first. And you got to put yourself in positioning to hear God. Oh, yes, we're going to, we, believe me, there is going to be a movement. But the movement is you. The movement is you being able to get in the right position and let God put you in position to move by his word. By his word. When you make a vow to God, do not delay to pay it. When you supposed, See, you're supposed to pay it right now. So when I say, God, I want to pray for, 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 for everyone. I can't delay. I want to pray. I want to open up the portion room and, and say, jump in. For any of your needs that, that 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 are needed right now, any any your desire, anything that God has planned for your life, I ask Him to give it to you right now by your need, and you're willing to ask. And He says, if you ask, it'll be given. He said, if you seek, you will find. He said, if you knock, how many doors? He says, all doors will be open. And you better know this: He'll open them right now. <laughs> you don't have to wait around for it to happen later. He'll open them for you right now because it's not in the physical. As I said, it's in the spiritual. Get the doors of the spirit open that you wake up in your mind, you get up in your thinking, you move in your purpose, and you know you are in the right positioning. Saying, oh, thank you, Father. I worship you with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my, with all my DNA, with my whole fiber. I give it to you. And I give it to you like never before. I thank you, Heavenly Father God, that I'm not distracted by, 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 by foolishness. But I know you will rectify foolishness. And you will put your foot on the neck of foolishness. And that you will remove foolishness from out of my life. That no longer do I have to be a fool myself. Because see, don't you know foolishness likes foolishness? Just like misery likes misery. We want to make each other just like we are so we feel that way. I, I release it in the mighty name of Jesus. That every vow that I made to you, I've given it right now. And we got to change our positioning. See, in this, in this wake up in my mind, getting up in my thinking, moving in my purpose. It's like I'm not waiting for God to move. I'm moving. Faith without works is dead. I'm moving so God can see me catching up to him. You know how many days there are apart? It says a, a day to us is a thousand to the Lord. And a thousand to the Lord is a day to us. Look at all the time that we got to make up. Oh, it's not on. Don't no, stop running the race around the track. It's the race of the mind to catch up with God and say, not my will, but God's will be done. And we're going to end with that one today. Verse four, when you talking to you and it's talking to me. When you make a vow to God, do not delay to pay it, for he has no pleasure in fools. Pay what you have vowed. We're going to end it right there. We'll pick up here on verse 5. And no, Continue to read it. We can study together. But continue to read it. Up to verse 5, chapter 5, 1 through 5. And we're going to end it right there. But watch this. There's a lot of stuff that you may have not completed over your lifetime. Today should be your day of reckoning. That you say, you know what? Everything I vowed to you, God, that I didn't complete up, I'm not even going to try to make it up. Forgive me. Because I, 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 I confess my sins. And you say you are faithful and just to forgive all my unrighteousness. 
So right now, Lord, I say anything that any vow that I made that I delayed on, forgive me. Any, 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 any vow that I have not paid, forgive me. But I say right now, I will do better now. I will not break the com the covenant of vow with you. I will pay what I have. I would what I vowed. I will give what I said I would give. I will do what I said I would do. Because I will wake up in my mind. I will get up in my thinking, and I will move in my purpose. Thank you, Father, for forgiving me. And now, Lord, anybody that I may have hurt or I may have offended or I may have rubbed wrong, I ask right now for their divine forgiveness. And I, 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 I repent openly to anyone, to anything that I might have done that wasn't right with you, that, that it wasn't intentional, but it happened. I ask for your forgiveness today. And I say now, forgive me if I've done anything wrong. And I forgive you if you if anything that, that you thought you did, you didn't. I forgive you. Today is, a, is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I won't look back, but I will be new in him right now in Jesus' name. Now, as we get ready to close, I want to open up, as I said before, the portion room. And those of you that don't know what the portion room here is at Provoke to Purpose Ministries, is uh, it's a place that us covenant partners, us prayer warriors, us interceders have devoted to God. In this portion room, we just give freely. Any, I, to me, anything that you have for me today, Lord, I give it away freely. Uh, I, I bless someone else with healing. I bless someone else with deliverance. I bless someone else with revelation. I bless someone else with anything they have. And I, and I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh yeah, the devil is alive. YouTube will be up right after this. Give me five minutes after this, and it will be on my Facebook page with YouTube for this broadcast. And look, and I want to ask everybody, I'm going to just a, a shout out. I would prefer if you watched it on YouTube and liked it and shared it. Uh, we really want to get some uh, energy and, and, and some and, and some focus on the YouTube station uh, that we can start transitioning some of our programming that even our blog talk is the, the enemy's trying to come against that. And, and now T-Mobile and, and uh, Metro PCS will not let you uh, listen without paying a, a, a penny a second, a penny a minute, which for. Uh, uh, for one hour is is one dollar, and that's that's very minimal cost. But some people still are in budgets, and we understand that. But the devil is a lie. We have another secondary call number three one nine five two seven two two one six that you can listen to live. Also, doesn't have many of the the triggers and numbers that you can push, but you can still message me or dial me, and I'll get you in on that one too. But listen to YouTube later. Uh, I'm going to listen because this was a dynamic word. Ecclesiastes chapter five one through. Five. But we say today that 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 if you have something that you are willing to, to to donate to the portion room freely, just give it. Don't put a name on it. Don't even put a, a direction on it. Just say I freely give. That anyone that is in need, because the portion room is now uh, uh, sealed unto God, and our free offering is now taken, and we are out of my hands. I can't say, oh wait a minute, I put this in the portion room. Give it to Joe. It's out of my hands. But I can say this. God will give as needed. God will uh, 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 supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. But we just want to give to the, uh, in, this, in, this, in this hour. And we're praying for you if you are in the need that God will bless you by your faith. You know, most of the time that most people, well, all the time really, that was very prolific in the Bible that people got healed. Jesus said it was by your faith that you were healed. That's why we promote waking up in your mind because you got to change your thinking. We say get up in your thinking so it's no longer your 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 your, your stinky thinking. You, I know you guys heard that before. Those negative thoughts, those I can'ts, those I wants. Oh, I'm scared the, 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 because we haven't been given a spirit of fear, but a power and sound mind to now move in our purpose to tell somebody else that he'll do the same thing for you that he did for me. Amen. God bless you, family. You are loved. You are honored. You are appreciated. In Jesus' name, God bless you.